So this lost me over $5 million in sales and it was such a stupid mistake. I couldn't believe that I did it. And I really hope that you don't lose the amount of money that I've lost. Hey, Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Michael Mojo. I'm the owner and founder of Mojo Human Performance Institute. We focus on business, mindset, and lifestyle hacking for driven mofos. And the reason why I do this is that most people waste their lives and I just don't want you to be one of them. Especially because if you're listening to this and you're a business owner or you're someone who works hard, you know, a driven mofo out there like I am and our community is, you're someone who is chasing after the dream. Now, I wanna give away some of these tools and some of these resources and hopefully stop you making a lot of the mistakes that I've made along my journey of running our companies. So today I really wanted to talk about the dumbest thing that I've done in sales where I have lost over $5 million in sales, probably even more in fact, it could even be over $10 million in sales. But it was because of this one stupid thing that I didn't pick myself up on. And it wasn't until probably the last couple of months that I actually realized what I was doing and the thing that converted the majority of our sales and the things that were stopping most. Now, if you're listening to this and you're going, but Mojo, I'm not a salesperson. You are a salesperson because kids are some of the best salespeople on the planet. They ask for what they want. They get what they want. They know how to communicate in order to maneuver, I guess, a maneuver or manipulate people to get what they want. So kids are amazing at sales. Now, most adults, they want something and then they just lose that whole ability to communicate effectively, to negotiate, to use their emotions, to pull on the heartstrings. Now, I'm not saying that you should do that if you're someone who's selling a shitty product or you're unethical or any of those things. If you're one of those people, get the fuck off my podcast because I don't want you to be part of this community. That's not what I'm doing this stuff and sharing this information for. I'm sharing this information because I want people to excel. And the truth is everybody's a salesperson. Whether you have to sell yourself into a relationship to go out or to date the person of your dreams, whether you're selling yourself to get a pay rise, whether you're selling yourself to go to the coffee shop or the restaurant that you want with your friends, we're always selling. It's just most people say things like, well, I'm not a salesperson, but the truth is you are a salesperson. Everybody's a salesperson. Now, if you don't understand negotiation, if you don't understand how people sell things, then you're going to consistently be sold or influenced by people who have the ability to sell. And you may get left behind in promotions. You might get left behind in your business because someone else is out selling. You. So we're all salespeople. It's communication, essentially. This is how I lost over $5 million. And it was because of this one stupid mistake. And that one stupid mistake is not clarifying why people want to work with me. Now, if you're someone who is selling a product or a service, this is the number one mistake that I see with people. And it happens every day of the week from when I walk into a coffee shop, from when I'm going to buy something, whether it's buy a new car or whether it's buy a house. The majority of the time, people don't ask what the problems or what the frustrations or what the concerns are of the person and why they're there and what they're really looking for. And I experienced this only a couple of months ago where I'd lost a sale and I was really frustrated because you know it, it potentially could have been anywhere between a fifteen dollars and $40,000 sale. And I went back and I really started reassessing why was I selling so well with some people? Why don't I sell with other people? And what it was, was I realized that I was losing sales with people who were unclear. And they would ring up and they would say things like, hey Mojo, I'm just sort of checking out prices because I've heard cool things about your events. I know someone who did it. And you know, I'm just looking for prices and some more information. And so I would go straight into salesperson mode. I love selling because I love getting people to our events because I know how important they are and I know how they change people's lives. I know the impact that they've had and how many lives that our events like Thrive Time have saved. I know how many business people have saved marriages or save their bank accounts or their businesses from going bankrupt or have grown their growth and reduced their stress levels and all of those sort of things or put in the right management teams, you know, have created op operational efficiencies in their business by being part of that. So I have this really strong belief about what we do. And so when people would ring up and they would just say, oh, I'm just looking for information, I would go straight into sales mode. You know, the event's awesome. It'll change your life. Like Thrive Time will help you to get really, really clear. It'll make sure that you're staying on top of your inspiration. It will get you inspired. It will balance out your emotions, balance out your thought processes. So you won't be stressed. You'll be able to get more focused. You'll get more fulfilled. And so I'd go straight into the pitch. I would go into that pitch of like, you know, this is the people who normally come to our events and we help solve these problems by creating operational efficiencies, by me bringing in the best people at what they do. And so I'm going into this erratic sales mode. I would almost hear the phone go quiet and the customer sometimes would even start talking. I'd cut them off because I'm trying to, you know, tell them how amazing this product is. Because I thought if I can get them to believe how much that I believe in our product and our service and that our stuff is better than what's on the market at the moment, they will believe too. The problem was that I never really defined what the actual problem was that they were trying to solve. So I was giving them a solution without being clear on the actual problem. And that doesn't make sense. 
And the majority of people, whether you're selling things like solar panels or whether you're an electrician or whether you're a plumber, the majority of the time, unless it's like an urgent thing where let's say the toilet broke and there's shit pouring out everywhere and you've got to go out and fix it, someone's going to pay. But normally what will happen is they'll shop around for, um, unless it's emergency, they might shop around for the cheapest person. And so you're always going to be price competitive. Now, if I'm going to do it at $10 less, the only way you can compete is by doing it $15 less. And then I can do it at $20 less and you can do it at $25 less. And so that price competition is a fast track to the bottom. This is the reason why the majority of business owners very, very rarely do a decent profit. The majority of them just scrape by. And we're seeing this right now in the housing industry. You've got property developers who are just doing enough just to sell properties. And so they think their margins at first seem really, really tasty. But then as they start going along, all of a sudden their margins are getting dropped. The tradies are coming in there, jacking up their prices, but they're trying to price compete. But at the same time, they're trying not to make it too expensive. And so there's there's all of this crazy frenzy around price, 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 price. Developers are trying to get the prices down to try and keep margins higher. And it's just this massive clusterfuck of everyone trying to get their little piece of the pie. I work with a few property developers and um, it's just a really shitty industry to be in, okay? And it's just because because everyone does the same thing. I was actually in a meeting the other week with the sales thing. I was in a meeting with, uh, with, with a bunch of people who were in the property development industry and they were talking about these issues that were going on and they were talking about the business model and how it works and all this sort of stuff and they, they were sort of bouncing ideas. And I said, can I just ask one question? Okay, I very rarely spoke in the meeting. I was just listening. And I said, how do you know that your model works? And they said, well, because that's the way that the industry does it. And I said, yeah, but the industry's fucked. So what does that tell you about your model? And they went, oh yeah, that's true. And I went, why don't you redesign the model? Why don't you do it differently? Find a different way. Everyone's doing the same thing, which is the reason why the industry is turning to shit. The best developers, their models won't break when everything else turns to shit because they have a good model. The rest of everybody else who is copying the same model and all trying to price compete and chop prices and keep everything super competitive and have really low margins and have all these extended payment terms and all that stuff, they're just putting themselves in a position where you know, at the drop of a hat, they can go bankrupt. It's crazy. But anyway, I'm getting into all the, I'm getting into the pitch and getting really excited about this stuff. And I would hear the phone go really quiet and silent and they go, oh yeah, cool. So if you can send me through some information and then I call them a week later or a couple of days later and can't get on the phone with them. I call them 10 times, can't get on the fucking phone to them. I send them a text message, don't hear back from them. I'm going, the fuck is wrong with these people? But it wasn't that there was something wrong with them. Is It's just that I believe that they felt like they had their time wasted because they were trying to find a solution to the problem. And because I didn't clarify the problem, and also I just gave them a solution without actually knowing what the problem was in the first place, they probably thought, well, this guy can't help me. And so they've gone somewhere else. Or they've just gone, oh, well, you know, it's not that big a deal. And so they've gone somewhere else. And I realized that the sales that I was converting, I would have people who would come in. First of all, they had great awareness. So their awareness was already high. But my job doing sales and as a business owner and someone who works in human behavior is to make people aware of the fucking problems that they have. Because if someone isn't self-aware enough, my job is to make them aware enough. It's not to blame them because they're not aware enough. And so I started realizing these people who weren't buying were coming in without the self-awareness enough to realize what the actual problem was in the first place. And I let them get away with it, which was my fault and my responsibility. And when I realized that, I went, fuck, I'm not only letting myself down, I'm letting them down. And that's that's not cool. Okay, as, as a coach, someone who I believe I'm one of the best coaches on the planet, um, especially from the people that I've worked with and all that sort of stuff, I let that slip. That was a major fuck up for me. Major, major fuck up. And so I then also thought about the ones that I'd converted and they would come in with this problem that they were self-aware of and they'd go, you know, Mojo, I've got this problem. They'd talk about the problem. And so I could actually give them the real solution that they were looking for. And then what happened was I started testing this. And so when someone would call up and they would go, well, you know, I'm just looking, you know, I'm just looking around and I heard that it's good. And so I thought, yeah, I might just check it out. And I go, okay, cool. So what's really the problem? And they go, what do you mean? And I go, well, what's what's the actual stress and the frustration that you have? And they're like, well, I don't really have one. I go, well, hang on. You gave up your lunch break to call me. I'm sure there's better shit that you could be doing with your lunch break. You could be having lunch with your friends. You could be sitting in front of your computer watching YouTube clips, or you might sneak off for a quick minute with Pornhub and go, you know, have a bit of fun by yourself. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But what I know is that there's so many better things that you want to do than speak to this clown on the other side of the phone for no real reason. So why are we really here? Like, let's cut the bullshit. Why are we really here? What's the stress? What's the frustration? What's your concern? What are you really worried about? Like, are you worried about you're not where you want to be in life? Are you just frustrated that you feel stuck in life? Do you feel like you're living this monotonous life and that you're not going to get to where you want to be? Is that why you're reaching out? Are you really that stressed in your business and you've just learned how to shut off and just disconnect from all of your problems? Do you feel that insecure that there's all of these stresses that happen when you were younger 
And so you just learn how to disconnect from your emotions and just go, oh, things aren't that bad. And is that also maybe the reason why your relationship's fucked up? Because you get home at nighttime and you just shut down all this stress and all this frustration. Your partner goes, how's your day? And you go, oh yeah, same shit, different day. And you just completely detach. They see you going through that. And so they start asking questions and you get frustrated and then your relationship isn't effective. Like what's really going on here? And then all of a sudden they open up and they're like, well, actually, now that you say it, I feel really lost in life. I feel like I'm not getting the results that I want. I beat the shit out of myself every day because I wake up and I feel like I'm not where I want to be and that makes me feel shit about myself. And then I create all this drive and I've got all this anxiety every day because I'm like, I've got to grow, I've got to grow, I've got to get somewhere, I've got to get somewhere and I've got to achieve something. And so every day I'm not I'm not fulfilled. Okay, I feel like I'm doing well, but at the same time, like it just feels like there's missingness there. There's just, I don't know. It's just that there's something that's not there and I know that it's missing and I'm it's, it's making me frustrated. And when my birthdays come around, I'm fucking miserable because I feel feel like I've just wasted another year looking for something that I don't know what it is. And I've achieved a lot from what other people see, but I feel like I haven't achieved. And so when I start getting going with all these problems, they start to realize that there's way more that they're really searching for. And then I can connect our product with the solution that they're looking for. And my sales have gone through the roof just by really figuring that out. And I see this happen consistently. Like I've had tradespeople come out to work on the house and, and, or even I've gone and worked with, you know, I go to take my car into the mechanic or whatever. And just a lot of the time, most people don't ask the questions. Okay. You're looking for a car. Why are you looking for a car? What are you looking for? What are your concerns? Okay. Is the price a problem? Is there other things like, you know, are you a parent? And now that you're looking for a car, are you worried about safety of the vehicle? And then the person goes, well, yeah, actually I am. Okay. So our job when we're selling something is to raise those concerns. If you go to your boss and you say, I want a pay rise and the boss goes, no, well, that's because you did a really shitty job selling. You did a really bad job. If you go to the boss and say, hey, I would love to get a 10% pay increase. And I'm just wondering how I can do that. And what are your concerns? All of a sudden, you're going to get that door and that window open up and you can communicate effectively with each other to figure out how you can sell that proposition. And so for all of those business owners out there who are listening to this going, well, it doesn't apply to my product because I'm a plumber and I'm an electrician. Bullshit. The problem is, is that you're, a, you're an electrician who's trying to sell. And you haven't considered the fact that you need to be a salesperson in order to sell shit. Okay, if you don't consider yourself a basketballer, get the fuck off the basketball court. You're just wasting your time and you're hogging it over the people who want to play basketball. The day you realize that you're a salesperson is the day that you'll sell well. The day that you realize you're a marketer is the day that you market well. The day that you tell yourself that you're a business owner and you take that on board and you take that seriously is the day you become a business owner. I meet business owners all the time. They're like, well, you know, I'm really trying to run the business, but at the same time, I'm still on the tools and I'm still having to solve all these fucking problems every day and I've got to go out and do customer jobs and blah, blah. And you listen to them and you're like, dude, you're not a business owner. You're a fucking tradie that runs a business. You're not a business owner that has a trade. They're two completely different things. You've got to own that shit first. When I hear people that go, I'm not a salesperson. Well, you fucking should be if you want to get results in life because everyone's selling something. Okay, if the coffee shop next door to your coffee shop is selling 10 times more coffee and you're complaining that your coffee is better than their coffee, you're getting your ass whooped by sales. Okay, I walked into a restaurant last night. I had uh, I had a meeting with my uh, accountant and we normally go out for dinner because we're good mates now. And um, we went out and had this beautiful dinner and we, we go to a restaurant. And that restaurant was an amazing restaurant. All through COVID, their customer service was phenomenal. I went in there last night, walked in. I stood at the counter for five minutes before for someone even acknowledged me. Okay, and it already pissed me off. Then I sat down and I'm sitting there and you know, waiting anyway, doing my thing. And I thought, oh, they'll bring out a bottle of water. No, no water. Accountant comes in like five, 10 minutes later. He sits down, we start talking. We're probably 20 minutes into the conversation. Lady comes up, puts a bottle of water on the table, walks off straight away. Didn't even ask for our drinks. About 30 minutes in, comes up. Oh, would you like it? Uh, would you like to order any food? Uh, no, I would like to order a drink. Okay, so we ordered, <laughs> we ordered our drinks. And then probably half an hour later, we're an hour into sitting there. This person walks past multiple times, didn't even acknowledge us. And then eventually comes over and, and um, the accountant signaled her and she comes over. This is the sort of shit that makes businesses go bankrupt, right? It's a lack of ability to sell. That person should be selling. Every staff member in that place should be taught how to sell and why it's important to be a good salesperson. They should learn how to upsell the menu. They should learn how to ask for drinks. They should ask, do you want any coffees with that? This is the reason why McDonald's shits over most restaurants. The reason is one simple thing. Do you want fries with that? That's fucking sales. That is brilliant. Do you want fries with that? They know that probably a third of all people people say yes. That's a third of all people that come into that restaurant. I don't know what the exact numbers is, but just by asking that amazing question and training their front end staff to be good at sales, bang, they outperform the majority of restaurants globally. In fact, they're probably, one, well, they probably are the biggest, I, I don't I don't know, but they're probably the biggest restaurant trained because they just ask the right questions. They focus on the customer experience, the customer service. Even though I personally think their burgers are dog shit and I, I, don't, I don't eat them. I haven't eaten one in like 13 years or 14 years. But the point that I'm trying to make is that I drive past them and the lineup 
is full. Why? Because their business model is based on sales and delivery of that sales product. Okay, it's not the best product. Whereas most business owners focus on the product and they don't focus on the sale. They focus on the product and think if the product's good enough, people will come. But then they get outsold by a shitty product and I hear business owners all the time saying, I get pissed off because there's so many other electricians out there and they're fucking killing it and people don't come to us and we've got the best product. And I'm like, yeah, but that's because you're crap at sales. Complain about it all you want. So if you're listening to this right now, it's time to start telling yourself that you're a salesperson. If you're a business owner, if you're not a business owner, it's time to start telling yourself that you're a salesperson. In my business events before, I've said this about marketing. I go, who's a marketer? And I watch like three people put up their hand. They're like, I work in marketing or I've got a marketing company. And then I go, right, we're all business owners and you didn't put your hand up. Why? We're all marketing. I market from the clothes I wear. If I rock up to a trade-based business and I'm wearing a suit and tie and I go into a, a, a work site in my suit and tie, the majority of the staff are gonna think that I'm a wanker. But if I rock up into a corporate business and I'm wearing tracksuit pants that are ripped with paint on my shirt, and I walk in and I expect to be taken seriously, they're probably gonna think that I'm a wanker. That's because the mark, the front end marketing is already shit. Now that's not saying that, you know, I hear this stuff where people go, yeah, but people should just accept that that's who you are. Well, that's, if you wanna play that dumb game in life, go for it. But like, if you wanna work in childcare and you got fucking tattoos all over your face and, and eye rings and nipple rings and fucking rings all over your face, it's gonna take you 300 times the amount of work to get that job. Now that's not saying you're not the best person for the job, it's just saying that because of your marketing strategy, it's already gonna take you longer to get that, that work. And you're gonna to have to work 10, 20, 30, 40 times harder to get that, that work. So we always need to be thinking about marketing and sales, whether you're in business, whether you're an everyday person, because the clothes that you wear are essentially your marketing. The language that you use, like I swear a lot, that's my marketing. Now, I don't try to swear, it's just that that's my languaging. That's how I market myself. So I tend to get people who are no bullshit, like things how that like like things said how they are, like the fact that I'm blunt and I just, you know, and that's, they're the people that I get who come to me for coaching or who come to our Odyssey business mastermind. They're business owners who just want it fucking straight down the line. They don't want to go somewhere and feel prim and proper and like they can't be themselves. I love going out with our people after the event, having a wine and beer and talking a bit of banter and a bit of shit afterwards because that's the people I like hanging out with because that's me. Now, if I've got to feel like I have to be restricted in who I am and I can't be myself and I've got to be prim and fucking proper and, you know, eat with the right knives and forks or whatever it is like, that they're not the people that I want to hang out with, right? But that's my marketing up front. So my point is the number one thing that I lost sales because of was because I didn't define the problem. But if you're listening to this and you're not doing the same thing, there's probably a couple of reasons. Number one is that you're not telling yourself that you're a salesperson. Number two, you're probably telling yourself that you're not a marketer. And this goes for everybody, business owner, non-business owner. Also, if you are somebody who is running a business and you go, well, I'm just a plumber, you're not defining what the problem is with customers. If you said to them, like if you're going for a job, let's say you're renovating a kitchen or you're you're doing a, a renovation job in a kitchen and you're a carpenter and you go in to quote that job and you look around and you go, yep, here's the price. Okay, yep, cool here. And you send in the quote. They're gonna probably price compare your quote to everybody else's quote, okay? And every now and again, you might get someone who is like, you know, I think this person's quality is better. But I'm assuming that if they're shopping for quality anyway, they're gonna have the top three people or four people that they believe offer good quality. And then what they're gonna do is they're going to price compare them. Whereas when you go in there and you go, right, let's do this. So here's, let's define what you want. What are your concerns? Okay, well, my concern is that the job's not gonna get done properly. Okay, cool, I understand. Have you had anything like that happen before? Tell me about it. And you really dig into their concerns. They're gonna go with you every time. Almost every time anyway, 99% of the time. Because they're gonna feel like they're understood. And that's really what customers want is that they want to feel understood. And then they wanna be given the best solution for the problems and the stresses and the frustrations and the fears and concerns that they have. The reason why people don't buy it is because they're unaware of those problems and concerns. If you're selling shoes and you walk in, I remember I was looking for running shoes for a while. Went to a couple of different places. People would come in, oh, these are good, these are bad. These have high arches, these have low arches. I'm like, I don't fucking know anything. I'm not a shoe expert, right? And I'm not a podiatrist. And this one day I walked into, it was Foot Locker in the city here in Adelaide. And I walked in, this guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, mate, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm just looking for a pair of shoes. And he goes, cool. So what have you looked at before? What do you use currently? And I told him, and he goes, so, you know, what are, what are some of the issues that you've had before? Like, what are some of your concerns? And I told him, like, I've, I was using this other pair of shoes and this other brand. I had blisters all over my fucking feet. And he's like, okay, cool. So what do you think that it was rubbing or that they just weren't a good fit? Or And he really nailed down into my problem. I walked out with a, like, $280 pair of shoes, right? And I didn't even think about spending that money. I just spent the money because I was like, man, this guy gets it. And at the end, he was like, man, if, if they're a problem, just bring them back and I'll, I'll, we'll see what we can do. And so he understood my problems. He really, really understood what I was trying to get and what I really wanted. And then at the end, he clarified it with, look, man, if there's still a problem, just bring it back to me and look, 
I'll help you out, like we'll figure this out. And I felt like we were in the same boat together and we we're both rowing in the same direction. Instead of all the other shops I walked in and they're like, oh, this guy's just gonna buy a pair of shoes. Man, you either want this one or you want this one or you want this one, like which one do you want? Well, if I knew what I fucking wanted, I would have bought them online, okay? I hope that makes sense to everybody. So please, if you're a business owner out there, try and practice this this week and send me a message on any of my social media threads. So if you're listening to this, please send me a message on my social media thread and let me know if you're a business owner, if your sales increase just by really nailing down on the problem. If you've got a sales team, get them to nail down on every problem and listen back to their calls and ask them, did you solidify the problem and did you make them feel that problem as though, fuck, this is bad and I got to, I have to deal with it? And number two, did you make them feel really, really understood and they clarified that problem really, really well? Okay, so what you're saying to me is that this, this, and this is your concern, okay? And this is the experiences you've had before, which you don't want again, I understand. So did you re-clarify the problem with the, with the customer so that they felt completely understood? If you do that, let me know if your sales increase. I would love to hear from you. So shoot me a message on my Facebook account, which is Michael Mojo double zero on Facebook. My Instagram account, which is Michael Mojo double zero or double O. Uh, unfortunately, someone fucking hacked my account and then wanted to get, I think, 10 grand Bitcoin off of me or some bullshit. Um, on my original account. So I had to restart the new account, uh, which is why some of you may f may feel like I've blocked you, but I haven't blocked you. It's just my old, old account got hacked. Um, so I've just changed the, instead of it being M-O-J-O double zero, it's M-0-J-0 O-O. So I just had to switch the O's around if that makes sense in the zeros. Um, but you'll find it on Instagram anyway. Just be careful because if you're getting messages about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency or investing, that's not me. That's some other motherfucker that keeps, there. there's people out there who are duplicating people's pages and then going in and trying to hit their audience. So they friend request all of their current audiences, make a lookalike page, and then they hit you up with crypto and all that sort of stuff. I, I won't do that. I won't hit you up with that sort of stuff on uh, your personal profile, uh, on your profile. So, uh, and send you messages. So please don't, don't respond to them. Um, just report them. Um, but um, send me a message on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Anyway, I would love to hear from you and let me know if this is inc increases your sales. Anyway, I'm Michael Mojo. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share as most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them. Remember, driven mofos, never underestimate the dream. Keep going hard.